What's going on everyone? I hope you're well. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to remove things like halters, lead ropes, and other types of blemishes from your photos. So stay tuned. All right, so I'm going to be using Adobe Photoshop for this tutorial. However, there are other free programs you can download as well as some you can even download on your phone. And yeah, it's good to keep in mind if you can't really afford or don't want to buy Adobe Photoshop. So moving on, first thing we need to do is create a new layer. The reason for this is so we can edit non-destructively. When I say non-destructively, I mean I can screw up my image and since it's on this new layer, I can just delete it and the problem is solved. If I were to screw up my image and it's on the background layer, well, I'm stuck with that screw up and it actually ruined my photo. So it's good to keep in mind that you should always start with a new layer. Our first tool that I'm going to talk about is the Spot Healing Brush Tool. It removes marks and blemishes from your photos. It's really great for that. You just click and, gr and <laughs> click and drag and it'll sample pixels from an area and use that to paint over your photo. That's what content aware means. It is aware of all these pixels over here and samples them to cover up the blemishes you want. Just like that. Magic. Very handy. Not always the best for bigger things though. Now the second tool I want to talk about is the healing brush tool. It kind of does the same thing. It repairs imperfections um, using pixels sampled from another part of the area. Make sure it is set to current and below. That way you can use it on the new layer. And you can click Alt Sample where you want to sample it from. You get that control with this tool. Is I want to sample it from about here to cover up this. And it just paint right over the blemishes you want to be removed. Just like that. Very simple, very easy. It's great for things like this. Be careful though that you're not pulling from the background or shadows or highlights because you can get some funky looking things. I'll show you an example right here. These flies, okay, you're going to want to keep this, this line, this line crisp. And if I were to just take our spot healing brush tool go like that. Well, it started pulling colors from the background and my subject, the horse right here, kind of blurs them together because it's grabbing all this information from this whole area. Now, if I were to use the spot healing brush tool, I get a little more control. Maybe I'll sample from that background and go like this. But as you can see, the same exact thing is happening. It's Pulling information from here, pulling information from here, and creating a mix of the two in between. So that doesn't look great. Well, how would I get a nice clean line? Simple. Let's talk about the clone stamp tool. It is one of my most favorites. It's great for making clean lines. So I'm going to want to alt-click right about here. As you can see, it picks up the back of the horse. And I can just click right over this fly. And kind of paint over him. You're going to want to make sure though that you move your selection if you need to. Let's do the same for this other fly as it picks up that nice background, a nice clean line and I can just join the two together and voila. Now that might not be the cleanest looking image and that is true. You can try cleaning it up with the spot healing brush tool, but you got to be careful that it doesn't start pulling pixels from the background like it did right there. If I were you, I would choose the healing brush tool, make some selections, shrink that brush, and start kind of painting over the areas you want to look better.
I really want a nice clean line when it comes to that and I think that's not exactly what I'm looking to do Let's see how that looks. Not too bad. <clears throat> Might want to clean up some other little pieces just to make it look a little bit nicer. And like I said, the spot or the stamp tool is really great when your spot healing brush tool just isn't cutting it. When there's a lot of information you need to keep on one side and you don't really need to blend it. see how that looks not too bad that weird little thing right there can definitely go though not too bad This is sitting up a little bit higher right here. Oop, I definitely need to zoom closer before I do that. And that's what happens when you use the wrong brush. All right, so now you get an idea on how to use both, well, all three. Let's try and use that technique on the halter. Let's start off with the spot healing brush tool again. Remember to keep your strokes kind of small. You don't want to do too big where it starts pulling way too much information. I don't know why it's being difficult there. Doesn't always do the cleanest job, but that's all right. Now when it comes to this nose, You're going to notice that going like this isn't going to do much as it's going to be pulling from the background since it's so close to it. So we are going to use our wonderful clone stamp tool. We're going to alt click about here, pull that highlight in from that nose, go down as such, and then we're going to start pulling something from the background. Let's maybe go here. Here. Something like that. Maybe blend this in a little bit better. The one nice thing about having a bokeh in the background is you can use, what is a bad example? <laughs> okay, that looks a lot better. But you can, it's a lot more forgiving when it comes to removing things like, let's use this. You can see how there's kind of some lines, but if I were to just clean it up, I could just do simple little clicks because it's Boca and it blends in. So it's always a fun little trick. But back to the halter. 
Let's continue using this here spot healing brush tool. It's doing a pretty nice job. Now under the chin, there's that crisp line, so I'm going to want to use the clone stamp tool. And I just switched to tools because I am pressing the wrong button. All right, so I'm going to alt click, maybe pull from that chin there. Kind of worked, kind of too big of a brush right there. So let's fix that. And let's see what this does. Spot healing brush tool. Some of it is a little bit of trial and error. You really got to see what works for what situation you're in. See, it started just really butchering that. So in order to clean that up, we'll use our wonderful clone stamp. A nice clean line. You can always clean it up a little more. Got to be careful that it doesn't pull too much pixels or too many pixels from another side. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to clean up these little blemishes while we go. Remove this. did a really good job of removing that. Normally I like to tuck this little part up into this part of the halter, but I didn't exactly do that because I wasn't thinking. But it would make your job a lot easier if you remember to do that. Neat little thing, less editing. You can see it started pulling from the body and the hair there. That's why we lost that texture. Just keep going piece by piece. I almost always use rope halters when editing or when editing photos when photographing horses just because they're a lot easier to edit oops edit in post so very good to keep in mind I'm just kind of bringing some of that hair back but All right, so we still have our lead rope we need to remove. And I kind of want to attack this blemish, so I'm going to try the spot healing brush since it's been doing such a good job. Looks pretty good. Whenever I get close to an edge, I make sure to stop because you might need to use your clone stamp tool. Like I said, it pulls that in there and that's what I'm talking about. So you might be lucky. That did a lot better job. I'm going to need a bigger brush.
There we go. Okay. Now there's that kind of uneven bokeh look, which like I said, you could edit really easy just by clicking and really remove any traces of that lead rope. Obviously, you don't want a giant black bokeh right there, but if you paint over it, that's kind of what it looks like if you don't make a selection. So we're going to go back to our awesome spot healing brush tool. You can see the remnants of the rope, but it's no big deal. You can always go back and blend that in. Just kind of click. Let's use our spot healing brush. Always good to zoom out though and check and make sure you're not overdoing it. There really wasn't a whole lot of bokeh obviously in that tree because it's solid and there's no light coming through so. Best to attack it with the spot healing brush. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now, we just have to get this blade of grass, or whatever that is, out of her mouth. This would be quiz time if I could actually quiz you guys, but we're going to start off with our clone stamp tool real close to the mouth. Kind of just getting rid of that blade of grass. Super close to the mouth. All right. Remove the rest of that. That's a little uneven. I don't know what just happened there. All right. Well. I think that looks pretty good. The grass is gone. All of our edits are on our other layer. And it looks pretty close to the original. It's never going to look exactly the same. but you get the gist of it. All right, you guys, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have any questions about anything or even some feedback? I'd love to hear it. And if you're new to photography or maybe you just like horses or want to take better pictures of your horse or pets, well, I have a lot of new content coming up, so be sure to click that subscribe button and that little bell next to it to be notified every time I make a new video. Thanks. Take care.